before the speaker comes to teach to us today and speak what God has given them, that we would all come and bring our Sunday school offering up to the offering baskets. Hallelujah. And we're going to pray over the offering. Lord Jesus, anoint the offering, O God, in Jesus' name. Let it be used for your kingdom and your purpose. Multiply it, O Lord, according to your will, O God. Bless it, O Lord. Bless the gift and the giver and those that have none to give. Lord Jesus, bless the Sunday school today, O Lord. The lesson, the word, O God. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you praise and glory and honor, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would, the ushers are going to make their way around. I, I asked for to bring it, but uh, I think we're going to go ahead and let the ushers make their way around, and if you would have offering, turn it in, and right now I'm going to turn it over to the Sunday school speaker. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I think that song and the prayer uh, was very appropriate because it goes along with what we're really going to speak on today. And that's breaking strongholds. Um, it's just a second part of it. We spoke some on it last week. and But you know, if you really spoke on the strongholds and what God tells us about the strongholds and how to get rid of them and how to live our lives, you could be taught a lot of Sundays. But uh, I want us to once again turn to 2 Corinthians 10. Since we've already got our offering, we're going to read a couple of verses. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. <clears throat> Who knows that Satan, he wants, to, uh, he wants to have the preeminence over God. That's why he comes to the mind and that's why he speaks to the mind because he is a destroyer. And he wants to take the mind and he wants the mind to think upon his things and not the things of God because he knows that he can take your soul. And I'm going to give us a little bit of a preview of what we spoke last week. I don't know, maybe some are, we're not here. I'm not trying not to take long with that, but I'm breaking strongholds. But a stronghold is a personal place of bondage. Personal. Think of that. It's personal. It's yours. It's mine. And no one else can get in that personal place because it's personal. And it can be brought on by a lot of things. Rejection, getting offended, wrong beliefs uh, in the word of God, false doctrine. It can be brought on by things that we have done in our life that Satan does not want us to be free from. And he keeps bringing it up until it becomes a stronghold that it's like it's a mountain that you cannot move over. But we've got to remember this. There's no mountain so tall that God cannot bring it down. It says bringing every thought into captivity unto the obedience of Christ that would exalt themselves over the knowledge of God. He wants to be greater than God. He wants to bring the vain reasoning in your mind against the things that are truly true in the word of God. But it's a place of captivity. It's a place that is fortified. A stronghold is a place that is fortified for the good. But when it's a stronghold in the mind and comes from Satan and even from our own flesh, it's not a good place, but it's a place of captivity where you are held in bondage by what is in your mind. You are not free. You are bound. One way that you can recognize that Satan, and this we covered this last week, one way that you can recognize that Satan is either building him a stronghold or you already have a stronghold in your life is the fact that you're going to have repetitive thoughts. And repetitive thoughts will eventually lead into repetitive attitudes and actions. And you will know then it is a place of bondage because it's going to bring you down 
in your spirit, and in your mind. Because it's, it's been a master over you. It is in control of you. You may not be behind prison bars, but you're in prison. As long as Satan has that stronghold in your life, you are in prison. There are some fruit that come from this. We also spoke of this last week. Fear, paranoia, anger. We see the uh, unforgiveness. We see also the, the, even the hate the hate that can even lead to murder. So we see a stronghold can be death to the spirit man because you're not free, you are bound by the enemy. So we are in a warfare. We're in a warfare that is not going to be fought by flesh and blood. You may see someone as your enemy and that is your problem and I'm not saying that they cannot come against you because they can but what you have to do is you have to recognize what is behind that individual it is the invisible world it is principalities spiritual wickedness behind that person in other words it is hell using that individual against you so we see that we are in a warfare with spirits, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places, which means in the heavenlies, because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He has the airways. That's his territory. So we see that's what we are battling against. And these spirits, they have power, principalities, they have power in certain domin they have dominion over certain places. And as I said last week, I believe Memphis has a principality of murder over it. So you see a principality, they are over a county, a city, a state. That's their that's their property. That's where they rule. So we see that's what we are fighting. It's not flesh and blood. We can't box it out like they do in a boxing ring. You can't do that. But we see the battle that we fight is right here. It starts in the mind. Every battle, every murder that was ever committed, every act of adultery, every act of uh, being a thief, it started with a thought in the mind. A person doesn't just go out and rob a bank or commit a murder. It has to be thoughts that come to their mind. So it starts, the battle is here. The battle starts in the mind. We either win it or lose it according to the way that we allow our minds to run. We have to master it or it will master us. And there can only be one master, only one master. So we see we're in this warfare. So what do we do? We're in this battle, and what do we do? Number one, we've got to see that we're really bound. You've got to know you're bound before you want to be free. You've also, you've got to choose, do I want out of what I'm in? Do I want to be free? Do I want to let this go? Or will I hate on to this, hold on to this unforgiveness and hate Hold on to this thing that is in my mind because I've been done wrong and I will not let it go. So we've got to make a decision. Do you want to be free? Do you want to get rid of it? Well, if you do, you can. The choice is ours because, you see, our thoughts become a part of us and we are a part of our thoughts. As a man thinketh in his heart, that's what he is, in his heart. We see that... The Bible says that, that we, uh, we don't war, as I said, with the flesh and blood, but we're warring this invisible warfare. So uh, the word of God says, do not give place to the devil. How do you give place to the devil? You don't give the devil an opportunity. 
when something comes to you and you want to accuse, the Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. Something comes to you and you says, I will not forgive. Don't give place to the devil. The devil is a liar. He's the father of lies. He's the king of lies. He, he lied to Eve in the garden. He has not changed. He will not change. He's still the same. He's a liar. Do not buy his lies. Do not buy the lies of Satan. So do not give place to him. The word of God says that we are to keep our heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. How do we guard our heart? How do we guard our heart? You've got to guard your mind. David said, I will set no evil thing before me. Many people get bound by pornography. How do they do that? They look. They look at it for the first time. And then the second. And they keep on. And then they are bound by that. And they have a stronghold in their mind. And they are bound by the pornography. So what do you do? You watch over your heart with all diligence. You watch over what you look at, over your will, over your thoughts. You have to watch them. You have to take care of them. You've got to value them, protect them. Because the heart is man's emotions and his deepest feelings. Now, a thought can come to your mind, but if you don't let it stay there, it won't get to the heart. But if you play around with it, and you keep listening to it, it will get to the heart. Because we are spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Excuse me. I'll get it together. I want us to think about, we're going to read in a little bit from Ephesians. But I want us to, I tell you what, let's go ahead and let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6 and um, verse 10. It's a little bit of a lengthy reading, but <clears throat> starting with verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Let me say this right here. I had a very wise lady to tell me one time. She said, Satan is patient. She said, he will lay a plot and a plan for you. And she says, he'll wait for that to work in your life. But if perchance that does not work, he doesn't give up. He will lay another plan. He will lay another plot for your life. Because you see, Satan, he's spirit. He's been in heaven. He's been here centuries, thousands of years. We've been here a few years. So he knows how to work on a man. He knows how to work on a man. So we must know the tricks of the devil we must know his schemes. We must know how he works. And that is going to come, number one, from the word of God and from prayer. We're going to have to walk with God. We're going to have to know our enemy. But if we know our God, we're going to know our enemy. How do they know whether or not in the bank, whether money is uh, fake or real? They learn the real. And when they know the real, they're going to automatically know what's fake. That's counterfeit. So we see, put on the whole armor of God. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is not glorifying the enemy. This is simply telling us who our enemy is. The Lord wants us to know our enemy. 
but he doesn't leave us defenseless. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, notice those two words, above all, taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith. Do you know every day we walk by faith? We live by faith. If we are a child of God, we are a people of faith. Our walk is with God every day. It is a daily thing. But it says, the, above all, taking that shield of faith, wherewith you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching therein too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We see that Paul is writing to the Ephesian church. And he tells them that God has given them an armor, that they are in a warfare, that they have an enemy. It's not an enemy they're going to be able to see, but that God is going to give them an armor that's going to withstand the enemy. And he likens it unto the first century Roman soldier. What The battle armor that they would put on when they were getting ready to go to war. Now, they didn't put this armor on until they were going to war. They didn't wear it all the time. But when they were going to war, they would put on this armor. So what is Paul telling us? He's likening what God gives us. It is armor. You put on armor because you are in a war. You put on armor because you're going to fight a battle. But you're not going defenseless. God is giving you an armor to put on when you go into this battle. You're not going to be a prey to the enemy, but the enemy is going to be a prey to you because God is arming you with just exactly what you need. He's going to give you truth. You cannot fight the enemy if you do not have the truth. You can't be living in a lie and fight the enemy because he's a liar also. But he gives us truth. The word of God says he gives us righteousness. What did it say? It said the breastplate of righteousness. This is literally something that we are wearing. It is on us. It has covered the chest area. Because what is in the chest? It is the heart. The heart. It's with the heart that man believeth unto God. And it is with the heart that man believes against Satan and has faith in God that God will do exactly what he said he would do. So he gives us the breastplate of righteousness. We go in armed with the gospel of peace. And then he says, I'm going to give you a shield. And it's going to be a shield of faith. Now you see our our, our heart is already covered with the breastplate of righteousness. But this shield is something that's not on the body itself. This shield is something that's held in the hand. And when the enemy comes with all the fiery darts and he begins to shoot those darts at you, then you can take that shield and you can hold that shield up wherever those fiery darts are coming from. And you can use it against the enemy because God has given it to you. Because you've got the victory over the enemy. Our faith, praise God. I want to read this scripture in 1 John 5 and 4 says, for whatsoever is born of God, and who has been born of God in here? For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory 
This is the victory that overcometh the world, and that is our faith. Our faith. We are walking a faith walk, church, and we're going to walk with God by faith until one day we're going to be just like Enoch that walked with God. The Word of God said he walked with God and then he was not because God took him. Well, that's a type of the rapture. And if we are faithful to God and we walk with God each and every day, and we walk this faith walk, I'm telling you, one day we're not going to be either because there's going, to be a, there's going to be a resurrection and there's going to be a great rapture that takes place. Praise God. That's what I'm looking for. Whether it's the rapture or whether it's the resurrection, I want my soul, my heart right in the eyes of the Almighty God because that same spirit that raised Jesus out of the grave is alive in me today and that's going to resurrect me no matter whether I am alive or whether I'm dead. It's going to raise me up. Praise God. He says, and I'm going to give you the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Our head is covered. Our head is to be covered. When Jesus Christ set us free, he never ever intended for us to go back into bondage. He did not mean for you to go in bondage in your mind because he's already bought us with a price and he set us free. And whom the sin, what does the scripture say? Whom the son sets free, he makes him free indeed. They were singing the song. We are free, church. We are free. He's given us us this salvation he, something he's given us his helmet to protect our head our thoughts but he's given us something that is so mighty he's given us something that is so powerful that I'm telling you it's more powerful than any atom bomb it's more powerful than any nuclear weapon that's upon the face of this earth and that is the word of God the word of God. It says that he has given us the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now this is to be used offensively against Satan. It's not passive. We're to use it against, this, uh, against the enemy, against Satan, and against his forces. I want us to read Hebrews 4 and verse 12. I love this scripture. For the word of God, there is nothing, nothing that can ever compare to the word of God. Nothing. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing sunder of the soul and the spirit, of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. There is nothing like the word of God. It is powerful. And God has been so gracious to give it to us. He's been so gracious to give it to us. We can use that, church. We can use it. He goes on and he says, also, he says, I want you to pray. I want us to hear this. Pray always. Pray always. The Bible says pray without ceasing. No, we can't stay on our knees praying all the time. But we can be in the spirit of prayer. Have the mind of the Lord. But we also that doesn't give us a right not to have a time to set aside where we spend time with God. I believe in that. I've done that ever since I come to the Lord almost 50 years ago. You must have time with God. You must pray. Prayer is an essential in living for God. It is an essential. So he says pray always with all prayer and supplication. How? In the spirit. We must get past the flesh. Lord, as I lay me down to sleep, I pray you bless my sister. I pray you bless my brother. Oh, Jesus, thank you for this day. God, you're good. Good night, God. Uh-uh. You get past the flesh. You enter into the spirit realm. 
It says praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Prayer is not a part of our armor. Now, he's given us the armor, and we're all armed up, and we're ready for battle. But prayer is not, uh, it is not a part of the, uh, the armor. It is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon. And that's the way we're going to engage in this warfare is through prayer. It's going to be prayer. That's the purpose that we got armed. That is the reason we put on our battle armor. Because we are going to war. And we are going to use prayer. We're prayer. In reality, prayer is the battle itself. Prayer is the battle itself. We see that when we go into this battle, we don't go in helpless. We're armed. We're armored. But we're going in, and we're going in with a weapon that no man, no spirit, no devil can overcome. And that's going to be the word of the living God. We're going to war, and our chief weapon is God's word. When you think, I want us to look, I want to read Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. This is God. It shall not return unto me void. We went off. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. When you go into battle and you're armed and you're praying, you're, you're in the battle, you're praying, and you have got this weapon, that weapon, the word of God, you're going to pray the word. You're going to use the word against the enemy because heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. It was forever settled in heaven. It is eternal. It is as God. It is and has been. It it is, and it always will be. So we can stand on this word. We can stand on this word. You know, the word of God says that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Everything but the kingdom of God. And while we're in this kingdom of God, we're going to have this word of God. And if we stand on it, we're going to be standing, even though everything around us is shaking and falling apart. It's the word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never, ever pass away. He said, it shall accomplish that that I purposed for it to accomplish. He said, it will never, ever return void. It will never, ever return empty. Let me tell you something, church, when we stand on that word, when we stand on that word, I'm telling you, when we stand on that word, it cannot be shaken. It cannot be moved. He will not deny his word. He says he watches over his word to perform it. God is watching over his word, and he wants to perform it. He wants us to use it. He wants us to see just how mighty and how powerful he is and just exactly what he wants to do in your life and in my life because every one of us need God and every one of us need the word of God. God, and we need the spirit of the living God. We need more of God than we've ever had before. And I'm telling you, God has given us the opportunity to walk into something that we've never had before. Getting into deep waters, church. Waters that we've never treaded in before. More than just up to the ankle. More than just up to the knee. More than just up to the waist. But he wants us to have waters to swim in. He wants us swimming in these waters. The waters of his word, glory. There is victory. There is victory. There is no stronghold. There is nothing in anybody's life that's too great that our God cannot overcome. I'm telling you, all we got to do is believe God. Believe the word of God. 
God. Oh, glory to God. God doesn't want anybody in this place to leave bound. God doesn't want anybody in this place to leave with that stronghold in their mind that can cost them their soul. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, glory to God, the word of God. Our God is so great. Our God is so mighty. Our God is so powerful. He's God. And beside him, there is no other. It is no wonder that the word of God says that we are to bring every thought into captivity. Because Satan wants to exalt himself above God. He wants to exalt himself above the knowledge of God. But there is no knowledge greater than God. Satan's a damned being. He's going into the lake of fire. He's bound for hell. And he wants to take everybody with him that he can. But if we'll live for God, if we will pray, if we will get rid of the strongholds, the things in our lives that's holding us back, and if we will live for God the way God has given us in his word, I'm telling you we've got something awaiting us like nothing we have ever even dreamed of. The Bible says the eye has not seen and the ear has not even heard what God has prepared for them that love him. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the word of God, the word of God. It never falls. It never fails. The word of God says not one jot. Not one dotting of the I, not one tittle, not one crossing of the T shall ever fall. Never, never. It's just as God. This word of God that he gives us, that's just God in written form. It's God in written form. It will not pass away. Jude 20 says, But you, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith praying how how what have we got the Holy Ghost praying in the Holy Ghost once again we got to get past the flesh past the flesh the Lord gave me a message one time getting past the flesh barrier we've got to get past the flesh barrier and we've got to get into the spirit. He says, Jude says, building up yourself. Building up. And what was that word building? That word building just kind of jumped out at me. If you build something, it's not just this. But you're going to put something else on it. And you're going to put something else on that. You're building. If you're building a house, you're going to have a foundation. But you're not going to have just a foundation if you want a house. You've got to continue to build on it. You've got to continue to add on to it. So he says when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're building up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. I just about run over last week. I don't want to do that this week. But now I can, well, I could see the time. But we see that if we are to overcome, we've got to put our eyes on Jesus. We cannot, and this is, this, this is hard. When you're going through a hard time or you're, or you're in a battle, you know, it takes a fight. But what are we talking about? A battle. We're talking about a battle. We're talking about warfare. But we're talking about what God has given us. He's, talking, he's telling us how to overcome the battle that we are in. And church, we will be in a battle with the enemy until we leave here. He's not going to lay down and play dead and be a sweet little devil. No, he's going to fight because he wants the soul. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Any way, any way that he can is what he comes to do. But God equips us. He gives us his name. All power in heaven and in earth has been given unto that name. So we have to pray. We, and we have to have a determined mind. A determined mind. I will not be defeated. I am not a victim. I am the victor. Satan, it is you that is damned, 
not me. I've read the back of the book, and I win. You lose. So we have to have a made-up mind. We have to remember, when we go to prayer, when we go to war, and we use that word of God against him, we're going to, if you have a particular thing, or if I, but if you have a particular thing in your life, and it is a stronghold, I would admonish you to go to the word of God and get you some scriptures. Write them down. Wherever you pray, take them there. Pray over them. Pray them. But when, when you use the word of God against Satan, he loses. When Jesus Christ had been fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was weak. He was the son of God. He was the son of man. He was 100% God, but he was 100% flesh. He was hungry. He was tired. He was weary. So Satan came at him at his weakest point. But what did Jesus do? He did just what we are to do. Every time Satan would come at him, he would say, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is written. So we can go before Satan and we can say, it is written, Satan. I am an overcomer. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You can speak the word of God to him. He cannot overcome that word. And Jesus Christ has also given us his blood. Let me tell you, that blood will never lose its power. That blood is just as powerful today as it was on the day that Jesus Christ shed it. He shed it for our sins. But we can use that in prayer against the enemy. Satan, I plead the blood over my children. Satan, I plead the blood over my mind. Satan, my mind is free because the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me. Because the blood of Jesus Christ has given me a sound mind. A sound mind. God has given me peace. Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Speak the word of God. Just speak the word of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside the still water. Whatever you're going through, get you some scriptures and I'm telling you, pray the those scriptures because I'm telling you Satan doesn't have the power over God nor his word and when you speak it he doesn't have it over you <laughs> Jesus he does not have it over you do not do not do not accept defeat go back if you have to go back again and again and again, keep going, keep going, keep praying, keep speaking the word, keep doing it in Jesus' name. Isaiah 59 and 2. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. God hears and answers prayer. God hears us. God, we are, we are his child. We are the sheep of his pasture. So we've done all that we're to do to stand. And you know what? We've overcome, we've overcome the enemy. The stronghold has been pulled down. So what are we going to do now? What would you do now? The stronghold has been pulled down out of your mind. And so now, what do you do? You are going to build another stronghold. You say, build another stronghold? Yes, you're going to build another stronghold. But this stronghold is going to be a stronghold of righteousness. It's going to be different from that one. It's going to be a stronghold of righteousness. Once you've been set free, where there was fear, there's going to be faith. Where you were the victim, you're going to be the victor. Where there was hate, you're going to put love. Where there was rebellion, there's going to be obedience. Where there was pride, you're going to humble yourself. 
Where there was anger, you're going to have peace. The word of God says that we are to put off the old man and his deeds. Put them off. And we're to put on the new man. And that we are to be renewed. What does the scripture say? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The way that we are renewed in the spirit of our mind. We live in a troubled world. There is chaos all around us. Political. And, and it's, it's, it's trouble. I mean, honestly, the world is upside down. And it's enough to get to the mind. And, you, and, and see the things it's taking. So this is why we must... Keep the word of God in us, church. You can get turned aside. Put off the old man, it says, with his deeds. Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Who wants to be like him? The image of him that created him. We want to be like Jesus. Psalms 23 says, my cup runneth over. So what are we going to allow our cup to run over with? Are we going to allow our cup to run over with negativity, unbelief, unforgiveness, strife, rebellion, living like the world? Or are we going to allow our cup to run over with surely goodness and mercy and grace and love and being like Jesus. It's in, it's, it's in our charge. It's up to us. What are we going to allow our cup to run over with? Psalms 19 and 14. It says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord my strength, and my redeemer. I want us to think about what that says. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, the heart, that's something in here. There's a scripture that says, talks about truth and sincerity on the inward parts. That is what I pray for. God, give me truth and sincerity on the inward parts. But the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. We have about four minutes. And so there is a scripture uh, that I want us to read that is in Psalms, I'm sorry, in Isaiah 54. And I did not give that to y'all. Isaiah. Fifty four. And verse seventeen. When you're in a battle and you're praying, this scripture right here, I prayed this for someone, and the someone's here that knows that I did, but I call no names. You can pray scripture over people. You can pray scripture over your own life. I took this scripture and I prayed it more than one time for this individual. And I would put their name in it when I prayed. But I'm just going to read the scripture and you read it with your name in it. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against Joyce Turner shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against Joyce in judgment, God is going to condemn. This is the heritage of the servant, Joyce, of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I want us to think about what that scripture is saying. It's power when you pray the word. No weapon. That's N-O. None. Zero. 
No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment. And you know the devil will accuse you. The devil will accuse you. Don't allow the devil to accuse you. Bring it down in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you. Bring it down in the name. I can't say it enough. Bring down the accusations of the enemy in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. When Jesus walked up on this earth, he healed all that came to him. He cast out demons. He raised the dead. He made the lame to walk. He made the blind to see. He made the deaf to hear. And he even made the dead to raise. So there is nothing that God can, has not given us that we cannot use against the enemy. Don't allow the enemy to plant these things in your mind and destroy you. I'm telling you, you are a child of God. I want us to stand up and I want us to proclaim, I am a child of God and no weapon that's formed against me, it shall not prosper because my God has given me everything that I need to overcome. I am an overcomer through the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord God, I thank you for the blood. I thank you, Lord, for your sanctifying spirit. I thank you, God, for your spirit, God, that is within me, Lord. And I thank you, God, that the power that is in me is greater than anything that is in the world. And God, I'm asking you in your mighty name, this stronghold that is in my mind, Lord. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, and you can name your stronghold, but pull down that stronghold in the name of Jesus. For all power in heaven and in earth, Lord, that is you, Jesus. Your name, Lord, your name, all power, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that you are Jesus Christ to the glory of the Father. There is power, there is power in prayer. There is power in the word. There is power in the name. There is power, oh glory to God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I pray your blessings, Lord. Even right now, God, upon each and every one in the sounding of my voice, oh God, if there be any strongholds, God, that help them bound, Lord. I'm asking you to loose them in the mighty name of Jesus, God. I'm asking you, Lord, that they will name that stronghold, that they're going to come to you with faith in their heart, believe in God, that you are a prayer answering God, that they do not have to leave here bound in their spirit, but God, that they can leave free, free in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Give him praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Glory, glory to our great God and our great king. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Remember, whom the sun sets free, they're free. He doesn't want you back in bondage.